All right, hello everyone, and welcome to our next EDW session called Dema Dimbach, The Who and the What by Raymond McGirt, who is a computer scientist at Data Expeditions. Uh, all audience members are muted during these sessions, so please submit your questions in the Q&A window on the right of the screen, and our speaker will respond to as many questions as possible at the end of the talk. So let's begin our presentation now. Thank you and welcome, Raymond. Good day, everybody. Welcome to this session. Hope that the um, uh, conference is going well for you so far. Um, what I am presenting is essentially a critique of the Damon Dimbach, uh, looking at the context diagrams. And if you're not sure what they are, I will explain what, what those are in the sections that we're looking at in particular. Uh, this is a little bit about me. Um, the main things I want to highlight here is uh, I've been working in data since 1992, um, took some data classes in college as well. I've done various uh, things with data through the years as highlighted there. Um, I am a certified data management professional from, uh, from the DEMA. I am also hold a data modeling certificate from the Data Modeling Institute. I've been a data DEMA member since 2012 with the Indiana chapter that's based in Indianapolis. Um, here are my primary sources for most of the information that I'm using. Of course, the DEMA Dimbach. Uh, I rely heavily on it, specifically the context diagrams. And also the DEMA Dictionary of Data Management. I use that for a lot of definitions. I, I do use a lot of definitions throughout this presentation because I think it's important that we all be sort of on the same page as far as what we're talking about, what a data architect is, what a business requirement is, things like that, that you understand at least the viewpoint that I'm presenting as a definition so that you can either agree or disagree based on what your own um, uh, interaction with these people are. I realize different businesses will have, may have a business, a data architect, but it may, they may do a slightly different thing than what the definition is, and that's okay. Um, sometimes the data architect is completely different than what the definition is, and that's okay too. I at least want to present what I view as the defined definition for data architect. In the clip art sources that I used, uh, most of them said you can use the clip art as long as you give credit, credit is due. So here's all those. We're going to look at the context diagrams, explain what they are, and explain the different sections that, um, that are used for this presentation. We're going to look at the inputs and deliverables for, excuse me, for the what, the items that are used to uh, perform the activities and what comes out of those activities. We're gonna look at the who, which are the suppliers, the people who provide information for the activities, the participants, the people who actually execute the, the uh, activities and the consumers, the people who use the things that come out of the activity. And I'll have some final thoughts at the end. Now we're going to look at the DIMBOK and specifically the context diagram. So like I state there, each knowledge area has a context diagram. And this is a sample one from the data governance and stewardship knowledge area. Um, and this is the basic format. Uh, each diagram will will have uh, definitions and goals, uh, technical drivers and activities, business drivers, and then the others I will explain here shortly. In particular, what we're going to look at for the what are the inputs, which are highlighted here, and the deliverables, which are highlighted here. The, uh, these are, I think, fairly straightforward. The inputs are the documentation and data items that are used by the activity to perform the activity. 
the deliverables or the things that are come out of that that are produced by the activity and hopefully used later on. The context diagram also has suppliers. These are the people who perform activities ahead of or perform tasks ahead of the activity to prepare uh, whatever is needed for the activity. The participants are the ones who are actually executing the, um, the activity for the knowledge area. And they have basically the hands on for this particular knowledge area. The consumers are the ones that are using the information that comes out of the activity uh, in, in some fashion to make decisions, to use in later knowledge areas or other knowledge areas, um, and to perform tasks that they need to do uh, as part of what is determined by the activities of this knowledge area. And my hypothesis for this uh, presentation is the what's and the who's are used in several Dimbach knowledge areas. The idea that I was hoping would I would find was that the inputs and deliverables are used in several areas of the um, several knowledge areas. They're not just used once and then they're done. And also the who's are are spread out between the knowledge areas that they have to have their hands in several knowledge areas. They're not just focused on just one knowledge area specifically all the time. So we're going to look at the watts, the inputs and deliverables. And here's a tree map that I generated that has uh, each of the knowledge areas uh, with the documentation that is produced by the knowledge area, or excuse me, the uh, that is uh, input and deliverable by the knowledge areas. And if you look at like data governance and stewardship, uh, about a two thirds of the way over, there's a thicker line than the rest of them. The ones on the left are the inputs, the ones on the right are the deliverables. Um, and this is similar for all the other knowledge areas. Excuse me. <coughs> Look at another way. These are all the, this is all the documentation, both inputs and deliverables that are used uh, throughout all the knowledge areas. And below them, uh, within each knowledge, within each documentation item, are the knowledge areas that those are used in. Um, You'll notice that there are a lot of doc documents, inputs, and deliverables. Um, some of them uh, appear to not be used to very often, but we shall see. The first set of documentation are regulatory requirements. These are the things that either a government or a licensing agency or an oversight agency will place on a company or organization uh, in order to um, manage and regulate, as the term alludes to, the products and the practices of the organization. And this is one of those definitions that was not in the dictionary. So I highlight, I note the uh, website that I got that from. And this will happen a few other times as well. I'll give you a moment to read that, read through that. Okay, moving on. Regulatory in, reg requirements are inputs for these three knowledge areas, the data governance and stewardship, the data security, and data integration and interoperability. Um, I feel these are highlighted or these are noted here because the regulatory requirements play a key role in how things are set up and how things are managed, how things are kept secure. Um, 
the G, uh, GPDR, I believe it is, in the California uh, privacy play a lot into security and governance as well, as well as how data is used in the integration interoperability area. IT strategies. These are action plans for achieving a goal. Um, basically in their long term as the definition there uh, alludes to. Um, these are basically plans that are uh, set in motion to determine how the IT structure of the corporation or organization is going to be managed. And these are inputs in the data government and stewardship again, uh, documentation and content management, data warehousing and business intelligence. Uh, these IT strategies is key in these areas because they determine how infrastructure is set up and also how um, data is managed throughout the life cycle and also how it is used especially in business intelligence the idea is that you have to have the infrastructure and the data in the right place in the right settings in order to be able to get the meaningful data out to be able to do business intelligence work with it Data strategies, similar to IT strategies, except this is more focused on the data itself. Um, it's uh, it's more along the lines of, like I said, how the data is managed instead of just the IT. Uh, again, with well, let's look forward here. Uh, data strategies, again, is an input for data governance and stewardship and also data architecture. And it's also a deliverable for data governance and stewardship. Um, as inputs, data strategies play a role in these um, knowledge areas because it determines how things are set up for... Um, how things are set up to allow access, allow usage of the data that's being generated and placed in the data storage areas. It's deliverable out of data governance because it is uh, it sets in motion the principles that will be used further down the road to determine how things are set up. Uh, data standards. Um, this, this definition comes from the EPA, and it's all about how the data is going to be managed across the organization. Um, there has to be a higher level and overarching set of standards, but each business unit can set its own standards, I believe, as well for um, its own domain of data, as long as they're consistent with the overarching data standards. Give you a moment to read that. Data standards are an input for data modeling, design, data integration, interoperability, data quality. Um, this data standards go a long way in these knowledge areas because they help define how the data is going to be arranged uh, and by defining how it's going to be arranged you play a role in how it's going to be used as well and who has access to it and what the basically what the definition of the data is will be key in these knowledge areas. Business requirements. Um, these are 
overarching requirements, as it says, for the business uh, for performing for the, uh, the performing organization, corporation, whatever. Um, it becomes uh, the objectives for fulfilling a project. Uh, what do you hope to gain by uh, by initiating this project as a project goes on? What do you hope, what is the final goal? And what are the parameters that exist in between the start and the finish? Business requirements are input for data warehousing, business intelligence, metadata management, and data quality. And to be honest, I'm kind of surprised that it's not an input for a simple for a couple other uh, knowledge areas as well, in particular the data governance and stewardship. Uh, business requirements become important here. Because especially with the data warehousing and business intelligence, it helps uh, focus on the end goal and the parameters in between. So you, you get a sense of as you're mining the data, uh, using the data, analyzing the data, that you get a sense of what it is you're looking for and can determine are you finding what you're looking for or is there a problem? Is there something else that needs to be done to get to arrive at the solution? Data quality, um, business requirements become uh, a data quality concern as well because it's the business requirements that determine what the level of quality is, what level of quality is expected. Uh, it plays a role because, uh, again, it gives you a sense of what is expected and allows the data quality personnel to understand what is good, bad, or indifferent in the data that they're seeing and the quality of the data that they're seeing. And I believe the business goals. Um, simple, straightforward, and Definition what a company expects or hopes to accomplish over a specific period. Um, business goals become, uh, as it says, the expectations of the company or organization. Uh, and the period could be six months, a year, five years, 10 years, however long that company wants to decide that period will be. And also, it I think the yes is important here, business goals, in that there are usually more than one goal that a company is striving for, and there may be competing goals, and there needs to be an organization within the business that determines how those competing goals will be managed. Business goals is an input for data governance and stewardship, data security, data integration, interoperability. Um, I feel that the business goals become the key drivers in these areas because they kind of set the agenda for what will be the outputs of the, the deliverables of these knowledge areas. Um, they determine the business goals also set parameters much like the business requirements and will um, will will drive how that how those activities within the within the knowledge areas are processed. Business strategies, uh, business strategies, much like IT strategies and data strategies, are. Uh, plans and principles that are set forward. Uh, again, the strategies set parameters for how the um, business, how the activity will function within those parameters. The business strategies is input for business governance and stewardship, data security, 
due to integration and interoperability and documented content control. Again, it becomes important here, much like the uh, uh, like the other uh, um, other the uh, inputs and deliverables, especially inputs in that it helps define the activities that will be. be well, it doesn't really define the activities, but it defines how those activities will be performed. Um, it sets parameters, it sets target goals, um, it sets expectations for uh, what the end product will be for each of these knowledge areas. And now we're going to look at the who, the suppliers, the participants, and the consumers. Here's a tree map with the knowledge areas colored with the, um, with the suppliers, participants, and consumers behind it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you'll notice in the top left, the data governance and stewardship have a lot of people involved in that knowledge area. Uh, the way it works is top left is usually the most active, and then it goes down and then to the right, to where the data storage organization in the bottom right have fewer people, uh, but still an important knowledge area. Looking at it a different way, these are the different uh, personnel, these suppliers, participants, and consumers that are used with the knowledge areas that they are uh, used in, either as a supplier, participant, or consumer. Um, again, top left is the one that has the most knowledge areas, bottom right has the fewest. And looking at some of these specifically, we don't have time to go through all of them. I'll just highlight the more common ones. We have a project manager who has the overall responsibility for leading your project. Um, and this involves, as the definition says that you can read, this involves several aspects uh, within the project that need to be done. Project manager is a participant in data integration, interoperability, data warehousing, business intelligence, and metadata management. Um, the project manager plays an active role in these knowledge areas, uh, largely because he's looking at, or he or she is looking at the information that goes in and comes out, um, and how that how it, transfers from an input to an output as well within the, um, the knowledge area. It's a consumer of the data governance and stewardship and data architecture uh, knowledge areas. That is that the project manager will take what these people uh, decide and incorporate into the plans of the project. A database administrator, very simple, straightforward definition, an IT professional role responsible for database administration. And database administration is the overall overarching management of the database. Everything from uh, setting it up initially to fine tuning it and tweaking it for to optimize it to resolving errors and faults and problems and crashes. Uh, database administrators to supply to the data modeling and design, uh, largely because uh, the database administrator will have certain tools available to them and will have to uh, keep in touch with the modeling and designer, the modelers and the designers in order to make sure that those limitations are not exceeded. 
database uh, administrator is a participant in data storage and operations and data quality. Data storage and operations because it's the operations part, especially that the database administrator is involved in because they're going to actually make sure the database is functioning and operating as it should be. And they're involved in data quality because they're constantly looking at the data with the data quality personnel to ensure that it doesn't uh, uh, fall out of sync and fall out of uh, the expected uh, parameters of the data quality uh, knowledge area. Consumer of the data architecture and data modeling and design. Um, the, I believe we'll talk about architecture later and data modeling and design as well. Uh, data architects and data modelers as well. But essentially these people will design, the architect will design the infrastructure that the administrator, database administrator is expected to implement. And the data modeler and designer will develop the actual design schema uh, through a physical model that the database administrator is also expected to implement as the database itself. Subject matter expert. Again, a simple definition here. Person with specific experience and knowledge of a given topic or function. Um, this is a wide ranging um, uh, person uh, skill set in that it could be the knowledge of a given topic or function. It could be anything from uh, uh, the data itself, how the data is used in the real world, um, how the data is received, how it's processed, um, just a, a wide variety of expertise that could be in a wide variety of topics or functions. The subject matter, matter, matter expert is a supplier in these knowledge areas. I won't read them all to you. Um, we'll highlight a few. Um, data architecture, the subject manager, manager expert will have specific information about what, uh, what, excuse me, about what type of architecture structures are available uh, in general and what is best used for the organization. Um, data modeling and design, subject manager expert, as I mentioned earlier, may have specific knowledge about how the data is used by the organization and will interact with the modeler and designer to uh, incorporate those uses into the model. Excuse me. In a data warehouse and intelligence, again, a subject matter expert will have specific knowledge on what the data means. Um, and we'll impart that into the business intelligence and the warehousing folks to make sure that it is uh, stored in a reasonable manner. And also that when it comes out of storage, that it is used in a way that is consistent with how the business is using the data. It basically prevents tunnel vision. And my favorite phrase for tunnel vision is working in a vacuum. Data modeler, a couple uh, uh, sub definitions because uh, use definition for definition. But basically, um, the data modeler takes the business requirements and develops a schema through a series of, um, of iterations to take those business requirements and develop a schema that the database administrator can implement to use as a storage method for the, the desired data. 
I'll give you a moment to read through that. Beta Modeler is a supplier, a participant, and a consumer. Um, the obvious one is participant in data modeling design knowledge area. Um, the data modeler is going to be just de developing the data models and the design of the database itself. Um, data model is also a consumer of data modeling design, and this is primarily because sometimes they inherit a data model and it needs to be reworked or redone in order to accommodate new requirements. They're also involved in data storage and operations because they're working with the database administrator or to, uh, sometimes there's only so much a database administrator can do to make the database efficient. Sometimes it needs to go back to the modeler to rework the model in order to get those efficiencies. Data architects. Data architects are, in my mind, responsible for the infrastructure of the data uh, storage uh, mechanisms. Uh, They're a supplier, a participant, and consumer in these uh, knowledge areas. Uh, data model and design, uh, the data model has to consider what the data architect has designed in order to generate an efficient data model. Uh, data storage and operations, they're working with the database administrator in order to help set up the infrastructure, uh, make sure it's running as efficiently as possible, possibly make changes to the architecture to accommodate unexpected uh, findings. A data steward. Uh, data stewards are business leaders or subject matter experts in certain areas. Um, and there are, are six different areas listed there from the dictionary. Or, uh, they're primarily the, in my mind, the people who are most knowledgeable about the data and how it's used. They're the ones who are most interested and care about the specific uh, aspect of the data, and they're the ones who spend most of the time uh, managing it in some fashion. Um, data stewards are suppliers, participants, and consumers in these knowledge areas. Uh, I'll highlight a few of the data governance and stewardship. Um, they play a key role in providing understanding to the Data Governance Council on how the data is used, how it's stored, and how it's uh, uh, managed throughout the system. Uh, there are key components understanding usage of data and are uh, very valuable to a governance council in getting a, a clear picture of how the data is used and managed. Um, they're in data quality, they work with data quality personnel. Uh, data steward can usually understand when data is bad and when it's good. Uh, they can set the criteria for that determination, working with the data quality personnel to ensure that the data remains at, uh, at peak performance. They're also a consumer of the data model and design uh, knowledge area as they are um, 
looking at how their data is stored and how it's going to be stored and how it's arranged, uh, making sure that it fits with the actual usage of the data. Conclusions. The what's, the inputs and the outputs are not widely used across the knowledge areas. Uh, you'll notice if you remember that a lot of knowledge areas had a lot of inputs, uh, or excuse me, a lot of the deliverables, well, a lot of the inputs were used as inputs in one place, but were not, the deliverables were not used in another place. Uh, the who's, however, do work in several knowledge areas. Um, and I think this is important to prevent uh, working in a vacuum so that having your having 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 by being spread across several knowledge areas, uh, it allows for the diversity of the that uh, they don't get too focused on one thing. If you look at the knowledge area activities from a holistic approach for and try to determine what's best for the overall database management system and not just what's best for that knowledge area. Uh, final thoughts. I feel that the 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 who's the suppliers, the participants, and the consumers are widely represented across the knowledge areas, and I think this is a good thing. Um, I think it's like I said, it's beneficial to have uh, a vast array of personnel looking at the various knowledge area activities, so that. Uh, you get a diverse solution rather than a tunnel focused solution. I am concerned with the deliverables and the inputs because they seem to be not widely used. They seem to be uh, used in a few knowledge areas, three at most, and then they're not used again. Uh, I think this is a problem because I think it allows for uh, for uh, some information from a knowledge area that has been generated to be lost in other knowledge areas because there's no supporting documentation or that documentation is not considered by that knowledge area. Here's some additional final thoughts. There's a lot of information flying around. There's 167 different documents that I catalog in the context diagrams. And 101 different people involved, different tasks uh, or different groups of people, not individual people. And it takes a lot of coordination in order to manage those people in those documents. And I feel there needs to be understanding of more than just one single knowledge area. Um, I think two or three is a, a good number that you may focus on one knowledge area, but you also need to have understanding of some of the knowledge areas that are working around you. Um, I am by trade a data modeler. But I've also gotten into data governance and data quality as well, uh, because I think those are important to my data modeling skills and to be able to produce a quality data model, I need to work with those people in order to um, produce quality data models that can be used across the board and not just within a focused area. Here's my contact information. Um, I will admit I do have a Twitter account, but I do not use it very often, although I will respond to anything directly sent to me. Uh, I most likely will respond to email. Uh, LinkedIn is a good way as well. Uh, if you want to connect with me on a regular basis, LinkedIn might be a good way. And with that, that's the end of my presentation. Uh, I'm going to drop out of my uh, presentation and look for uh, questions and comments. Uh, 
Let's see. See, I see mostly comments. Yeah, I see one comment that said business requirements should be an input to reference and master data as well. I agree with that. Inputs and outputs across the knowledge. Uh, one comment, I think business requirements should be an input to all knowledge areas. Everybody needs to know something about why they are doing the data work. I agree with that. Uh, See the actual question, do you believe that, that this type of mapping should be included within the next Dimbach? I think he's referring to the tree maps. And I think they should be considered, but whether they should actually be included in the Dimbach, I'm not sure. I don't think they bring a lot of extra value. Um, I think there, I, well, maybe some mapping about how uh one document leads to another one document from a cave from a key knowledge area leads to another i can see that being helpful but not the tree map itself and that's all the questions i see there's several other comments as well i'll read through those as i have time um i think we we finished a bit early and so um, if anybody else has any other questions, go ahead and post them. Otherwise, I think I'm done. All right. Thank you so much, Raymond, for this great presentation. And thanks to our attendees for tuning in. Please complete your conference session survey on the page for this session. The next session will start in about 15 minutes. Thanks, everybody. And let's give Raymond some claps. Have a great day. Thank you all. Have a good day.